If you want to be able to see all the beautiful finishes that you've been agonizing over while building or designing, renovating your house, you got to light them well. And in order to do that, you have to have a lighting plan. So today I'm going to show you the basics of laying out a lighting plan so that you can appreciate your beautiful countertop. There's choices galore for every flavor, for every finish, for every style, for every size. There's a light out there but you can get lost looking for them and waste a lot of time and a lot of money and not be ready for your builders when they need information and when they need decisions and have a plan for how you're gonna look for the lights that are gonna make your house special. The first thing that I do is I gather all the information that I need, floor plans, the kitchen plan, bathroom vanities, appliance specifications, of smart home features, speakers. You're gonna to wanna to know the locations of anything that needs wiring or getting plugged in. The fixtures of the jewelry, they're the things we're gonna see, and they're beautiful, and they're fun, and that gets clients excited, so we like to start with that. There are also less of them, so it gives you a sense of accomplishment when you finish choosing them. The recessed lighting then becomes much simpler to lay out. You just have to fill in where the fixtures aren't covered. Once you have that, you can sit down with your floor plans, a piece of tracing paper, or if you're fancy, you can use vellum. I am intimately aware of this house, so I come to this plan knowing the furniture, the cabinetry, the sizes of appliances, that kind of information you wanna have with you. If you are not familiar with reading blueprints, go back and watch my shorts. There's one minute little quickies. You can learn how to read plans because this is where the money is. This is where the mistakes are. If you can read them, you can find them in the front door. So you see here's an entry hall, coat closet. You've got a full bath with a shower, sink, toilet. Through the entryway, we have a door to the lower level and stairs up. Living room, we have an office. You can see a transom window here, 6'6", six, six above floor. Whenever you see AFF, that's above the finished floor. Okay, we're back out into the living room. We've got a kitchen with appliances laid out. So we have a 36 inch rain here. And then into the dining room. And you can see this dotted line indicates a drop ceiling. So we're gonna have cold lighting in here. So we wanna be mindful of that. And then we've got a pantry over here. Let's start with the fixtures because they're easy and we're gonna bang them out quick. We come in the front door, we know we want a lantern of some kind right here because this is a walkway. So we're gonna treat the living room as this space here. So we know we want a center fixture here, sort of a semi-flush in the office. We also want a semi-flush so you can walk underneath it. We want two pendants over the island. Everything else will be recessed. And in the pantry, we're gonna have some track lighting. In the dining room, chandelier, and there you are. You have all your fixtures laid out all of the lights that you need to shop for. And you have approximate sizes. And we're gonna enter that information into our Google Sheet. Just open up a Google Sheet for each project and go room by room all of the lights that I'm gonna need. And as I get information, I can enter that, like the specifications, the size, the bulbs, all of that. And you can enter that as you go. Now that we have all our fixtures laid out, we're gonna put the recessed lights in. So we're gonna go back through the entry hall. I know I want a light by the door, and I want a light at the end. We know we wanna light the bottom of the stairs, and this is a path, so I'm gonna do one more here and here. Here's something we need to be mindful of. When you're laying out your lights, you need to be mindful of heating vents, sprinklers, AC ducts, that kind of thing. We're gonna put some in the corners, and we want one light to hit the fireplace. Lighting the corners is a great way to give ambient light to the room and not light the top of everyone's head. We wanna be mindful because I know there's cabinetry going in here, my office. So I wanna move these lights out so that they're gonna actually hit the cabinetry. And then I have a transom window going here that I wanna highlight. So I'm gonna move these lights in so they can highlight that. And that's why you wanna know that other information, furniture layout, cabinetry, and you can simplify the process. In the kitchen, we're gonna have four task recess lights. These are a different kind of light. They're gonna be low voltage, a much purer, purer, whiter light. Then we're gonna have our accent recess lights in the corners here, here, and then out to accent the hood. 
Keep in mind when you have a hood, it usually comes with lights inside it. Mine has three in there, so it's gonna give you task lighting over the stove. And I think we're good here. We're gonna light the path, boom, 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 and we are done. Let's move on to more important things. I like to use them as a fill because they are expensive. When they're used by themselves, they make you look like the night of the living dead. You're in shadows all the time. And did I say they're expensive? They're ugly. They look like Swiss cheese in your ceiling. So we want to use them sparingly to do what they do best. They can be great task lights. They can be great ambient light and just light the path down a hallway. Or they can be great accent lights and put your focus on something you want to see. But they cannot be the only light. And when you start to lay them out, there's general formulas and there's really, really bad information on the internet about how to do that. Do not listen to that. Come three feet off the walls, make a nine by nine grid and you're done. You are not done. That's awful. Your house will look like a landing strip. This doesn't take into account anything that's going on in your house, in your furniture, in your lifestyle. Another formula that you take your ceiling height, you divide it in half and that is the approximate distance that your recessed light should be from one another. Let's say for instance, my ceiling height is nine feet. That's four and a half feet, right? When I divide that in half, check my math. If you put a recessed can every four and a half feet, someone is gonna come and land a plane in your house. So don't do that. You need to consider the type of fixture, the trim kit that's gonna go on that, and the spread of the bowl, and your house. So there's a lot more things to go into than taking a generic formula and dropping that in and hoping that makes a nice lighting plan for you, because it won't. Something important to remember that a very wise client of mine reminded me of is that when you have a detail like this coat ceiling here, where we have a dropped ceiling, you want to do what's called a reflected ceiling plan on the floor. So what Brian did was he laid out his beautiful coffered ceiling, boom, 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 on the floor. And in New York City, we had the added bonus of having sprinklers in residential design. We laid out the sprinkler design as well so that we could place the lights so that they wouldn't conflict with those things. Thanks again, Brian, for the reminder. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and let me know, and I'll be happy to make you a video and answer them. I had a question about when you do a, a recessed lighting plan in a remodel, and it's gonna be basically the same thing. You're gonna lay out your new plan and you're gonna locate your lights. Electricity is a whole lot easier to move than things like plumbing. In a remodel, you generally don't tear down all of the ceilings, so they use retrofitted recessed cans, which they can cut a hole in your ceiling and then put the light up in there without destroying the entire thing. Make your plan and then you can tweak it based on existing conditions if you need to. Usually lighting comes later on and you're pretty fatigued as far as decision making goes. Sometimes I see homeowners just say, I, I just want to be done. I don't care. And that for me breaks my heart because lighting is so important. You can save yourself a lot of exhaustion, aggravation, not knowing, holding up the electrician. When you hold up a sub, two things happen. They either decide for you or they go somewhere else. And either way you lose. And if you wanna know how to do a lighting walkthrough with the electrician, with your plans, cause you're now prepared, check out my next video. Thanks so much for watching.